Hi everyone! It is September 3rd, I think today, um, Labor Day weekend, and I've got a show coming up next week. I will be at the V. Nicolette Winery uh, doing a three-day show, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I unloaded my biscuit kiln this morning, and I have a whole bunch of stuff to glaze, which can be good and bad. <laughs> um, I love to do the paint, the hand painting, as you know, um, that's my favorite part. But like, you know, some of the stuff you just, we just dip it in a glaze and, you know, I don't get into that as much. But anyway, so the reason <laughs> that I'm doing the video is, at least this one, um, I do have some other glazing videos I'm going to do after this, so you'll probably see those later. But um, this company, I know this is backwards, but that's the way phones are. I don't think there's any way to, sw to switch it around, but if you remember a while back, I did, I did a video on using underglaze pencils and I used, uh, this called Pazler, P-A-S-L-E-R, and they're a lot cheaper than the other brand. So, and they work, they work just as good. Um, but like I was saying in the video that I did, they work much easier on bisqueware that is smooth. So if you use a bisqueware um, or a clay without grog, that's you know, like porcelain or well, any like B-Mix 5 without the grog, um, it works better. I use B-Mix with grog just because it's uh, friendlier hand building. It doesn't, you don't have the cracks on the bottom of the pots and stuff. I just emptied my kiln and um, I'm using Kentucky Brown Bear. And it doesn't have any grog in it, really. It's very minimal. And I think, I think three or four, four pots cracked. And, oh, you know how that is when you're a potter and you got a show coming up and all these, you know, you get these stupid little hairline cracks and, oh, try not to let it, let it get you down, but it does. It's so frustrating. But you don't have that as much with grog, but, um... So that's why I use clay with grog usually. And so, you know, if you're using the, the pencils, you'll want to, when you trim them, you want to take a rubber rib and, or the back of a spoon and uh, smooth, like burnish your pottery when you're trimming your uh, greenware. It makes it much easier than when you biscuit to use the pencils. But anyway, make a long story short. Um, so they sent me this film resist it's like a latex resist and they want me to try it out so I thought I would so I thought why not do a video while I try it out so um, I'm gonna try a couple different methods and I don't know if you've ever used um, the latex resist before but what's nice about it is that instead of waxing you don't have to re-biscuit to burn the wax out you just peel this latex off so I was kind of curious if you could carve through it um, because I, you know, wasn't sure about that. So I'm going to try carving through it. I'm going to try using it on the bottom of a disc and then dipping it in clear and see how well it resists the, uh, the glaze. And so I'm going to try a couple different methods here. So if you're interested in, in this, like I said, it's um, Pazler's, Pazler, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Film resist P A S L E R. So let's let's see. Let's see, I'll lower you down. <laughs> As you can see, it's getting dark outside. I think it's gonna rain. This, you know, of course, it waits for a holiday weekend to rain all all weekend. But you know, that's that's the way it goes. So okay, so oh <coughs> oh my God. <laughs> Are you still there? <laughs> oh, oh God! I just... Oh my gosh! This, <laughs> this paint. You gotta see what I just did to this paint. Oh, oh gosh! <laughs> oh, who? You, you, let's just say you don't want to smell the latex resist. Oh God! <laughs> 
You know this phone, if you know me, falls out of this thing all the time. Oh my gosh. I was, tr I was trying to raise it up and I could hardly breathe. Whew. Oh my gosh. Okay, thank God it's, it's not toxic. Oh gosh, I hope they don't. This company's going to hate me. <laughs> they see this. I'm sure it works fine. <laughs> but, whew, I, I put my nose up there to smell it. I don't know why. <laughs> it, it's really strong. <laughs> oh, Christopher. <laughs> my son's in there laughing at me. Oh, jeez. So I got water dumped all over here. The phone fell off and I got green underglaze. Oh Lord. I hope I hope you didn't hear me cuss. I try to be I try to be good, but oh, I think I said that S word. <laughs> good thing I didn't say anything worse. Gosh darn it, it's all over the place. Okay, well, let's just move right along like there's nothing like nothing happened. Okay. So don't sniff it when you open it, because whoo. It's not good. <laughs> let's try this again. And let's hope this stupid. This is like the third phone holder I bought. And uh, anyway. Anyway. Let's just let's just move on. <laughs> oh goodness. Well, you know, it's I'm always good for a laugh, right? Right? Okay. So whew, we <laughs> can't stop laughing now. Okay, so this is the Kentucky Brown Bear, and this is leather hard. Um, and in fact, it's you know it's on the on the dry side of leather hard, and I have white slip on here, and the white slip I put on here. This is cone five six clay. Whew, that stuff stinks. And um, I set that aside there a minute. <laughs> and um, what were they saying? Oh, so the slip. Is also cone five six. It's just stoneware slip. I buy it in a gallon bucket um, from my local clay supplier, and you can just mix your own. Really, I mean, get a blender and mix your own. But when you buy it, they do add a couple ingredients that help it stay smooth and um, not crack. And so anyway, so that's so this is leather hard with white slip on it that's dried. So let's take this film resist. I think I just, so I'm going to wet my paintbrush first because I don't really want it to go inside the bristles too much. And it says that it only takes like a minute to dry. And I can see that it's drying already. Whew, goodness. You, you want to use this in a well-ventilated area. Oh my gosh, my eyes are watering. If I pass out, somebody call 911, will you? Okay, I'm going to set that over there. Oh, oh my goodness sakes. I'm going to set this over here. Oh, my gosh. My eyes are watering. Oh, my lordy, lordy. Okay. Moving right along here. Let's try this one out. We're going to... I'm going to... Put some wax resist. Maybe I'm putting it on too thick. I'm gonna put some wax resist in here. I call it wax resist. They they call it film resist. So this I'm gonna try to carve through. But you can see where it's drying. It's getting darker, which is nice because then you'll know when it's dry. Okay. There's a gnat that just buzzed by me. The thing probably took a whip and passed out. Okay, so I'm going to put another coat on here because, just because. It doesn't say how many coats you should put on here, but we are going to put, I think, two coats. Although it's going on fairly thick. Whew. Hope everybody's having a nice 
weekend so far. And you've got some picnics or something planned. We were supposed to have um, a picnic at my brother's house tomorrow. But my one brother, who lives in Destin, he his truck um, having car problems, so he had to turn around on his way up here to Cincinnati, Ohio. So I miss I'll miss seeing him. Oh my gosh, my eyes are full. This is actually burning my eyes. So you will want to do this, like I said, in a well ventilated area. Okay, so. I'm going to put the lid back on here before I asphyxiate myself. Whew. Whew. Wow, that's like, you know, when you're, I'm not even going to say, is people who sniff glue. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have probably said that. <laughs> um, anyway, where, what, what was I doing? Okay, so uh, it says it dries in a minute. But it's not dry yet, maybe because I put on uh, put on a little thicker. I did do two coats, but I wanted to make sure it came off. You know how if it's thin, it won't pull off as easily. So I thought if it's a little bit thicker, it'll pull off easier. Um, and because it's on this leather hard, there is some moisture in here. See, now it doesn't smell at all now. So once it's dried, once it's dry, drying... It doesn't smell. So I've got this one going, and this one looks like it's pretty dry on the outside, except for except for the inside part. <clears throat> mm. I need a drink. Where's my drink? I need a drink over here. Drink some of my iced tea. <laughs> oh my goodness! So I'm gonna try and raise this up so I can let these dry. So. <laughs> So let's have a drink together. Oh, now it's crooked. Is it crooked? <laughs> you know, it's only, I'm filming this. It's only like, what, 4.30? I think it's only like 4.30 in the afternoon. Look at it. Wow. It's really dark. I was supposed to go on a, a boat ride today with my brother. Oh, I hear thunder. I suppose we went on a boat ride today up the river, up the Ohio River. Uh, we like to do that once in a while and go to a restaurant up there and eat and then come back. And I thought it'd be really fun because um, we had the WEBN fireworks this weekend. And so they got the fireworks barge up there that they're loading up with fireworks. And of course, it's supposed to rain tomorrow, so I hope that they still do it. But, you know, all the boats are parked in the river and um, they're getting all the stuff set up on, up, up in downtown Cincinnati. So <clears throat> it's kind of fun going up the river and seeing all that downtown um but they're predicting rain and so i've been caught out on lakes before and rainstorms and whew, i thought i was gonna die in the rainstorm <laughs> i got lots of stories i could tell <clears throat> we used to always camp every year and um it always rained. We always came home with our tents wet, sleeping bags wet. <laughs> they always knew when we when we went camping because we'd come home and the whole backyard would be filled with wet wet sleeping bags. But you know, I've always been jinxed when it comes to vacations. Tornadoes or tornadoes follow me. Hurricanes follow me. It's just the way it is. I might go ahead and try and carve through here. He said one minute, but. You can see where it's dark is where it's dry. And so it's still tacky. It's probably really, let's see what it says here. Let's see. Oh, see, look, I just, just peeled it right off there. It says this film resists as a red water-based liquid that prevents the color from sticking when the glaze is applied to bisque or greenware and it won't be absorbed. So that's why it's taken longer. When it dries, it becomes a thin film, which can easily be removed, revealing the design or just unglazed parts. Fast drying time. Natural drying time is one minute. 
Well, I know it's been longer than one minute. Um, says if you join the pass the Pazler Club, you get fifteen percent off your first order. So if you if you want to bring your phone up and scan that, I think you can either take a picture. Or if you've got one of those QR code readers, I think that works. But, um, yeah. Oh, it's getting a little blurry now. And there's the website there. I can read you, read you the website because I know it's backwards. I think the code will work out. It would be backwards, too. The website is um, www.pazler- art.com so p a s l e r hyphen a r t dot c o m and they now this says um hmm it's distributed by it says london england pasler art supplies but it's made in china but it was shipped to me from Upper Ohio. I thought I was thinking it was local, but so I can tell it's rubbing off of here really easily. It's just peeling right off. I'm not gonna open it again. But well, let's go ahead and try to carve through here and see if this works because we could be here all day. And it probably would dry faster because I've got the air conditioning on, but if it wasn't so humid, it is so humid right now because of all the um, the rain and stuff. So let's see if I can bring you a little bit closer without the phone <laughs> falling out of the, the holder here. I should remember to just take the darn cover off my phone. There we go. Is he okay? Oh, goodness. Yeah, because the cover's too big and it doesn't... Are you crooked now? I know. All these people out there, these other potters are probably looking at my video saying, what the heck is she doing? We're not really professional here, you know? Okay, so I'm going to, oh, so no, you can't carve through it. I was kind of hoping you could. So the wax, you know, obviously you can carve through. This kind of defeats my um, a lot of my projects. Huh. Yeah, I wanted to carve through it. And it's not working. So, see that? That's coming right off, which is what it's supposed to do. But I was hoping I could carve through it. Oh, there you go. So it worked perfectly. I mean, that's what it's supposed to do. But I was hoping I could carve through it and add a glaze on top. So, hmm. Let's, um, let's do a design on there. I mean, because obviously this... It's not doing what I, I was hoping, like, well, like I said, I was hoping to carve through it, but let's try, let's try this one here. Yeah, it's just going to all, look at that, it comes up nice. Look at that, wow. Did you see that? That whole thing just popped right off of there. So it's doing what it's supposed to do. Um, so if you put it on the back and then I can dip this in the clear glaze, but I won't be able to dip it after it's bisked. Hmm. Well, <laughs> I guess I, let's just take this off of here. Look at that. Pops right off. I'm glad I put all that on there, huh? It's 
So let's take this off of here, I guess. So it comes off nice. Like I said, that's what it's supposed to do. So it does take off um, a little bit of the underglaze since this isn't fired. There's a little, there's some, there's underglaze. So it takes a little bit of the underglaze off of here. So, so let's, oh, we got to open it up again. Okay, so, whew, let's, so I'm going to try something else is, I'm going to paint, I'm going to try to put this on a little bit thinner so it dries a little bit faster. But what I want to see is, I should have wet this brush first. So what I want to see is that once I paint this on here, yeah, you can see it's already drying right here. Let me paint this on and see before I asphyxiate myself. So you can see where it's light pink is where it's wet. But as soon as it dries, it turns this dark color. So I'm going to apply this, then I'm going to put white paint on the brown underglaze. See, can you see that uh, as I'm putting it on, how pink it is? And it dries really fast. Because I'm putting it over underglaze, which is dry, rather than the clay, which has a lot more moisture obviously because it's um it's just leather hard so you can see how fast it's drying so okay so let's do a little test here um it's it's water soluble so you can rinse your brushes out if you rinse them out immediately um it shouldn't harm them um so let's paint Let's paint a let's paint a flower on here real quick. Um, let's see. How about a sunflower? We'll do a sunflower. I'll try to hurry up here a little bit. Yeah, if you like underglaze pencils, these are these are a lot cheaper than um, the other ones. And another tip with the pencils is, I was saying in my other video when I did of those, is that um, you'll want to wet the tip, just dip it in water before you use it, and you'll get a much smoother a much smoother um, line. So just kind of doing and then we'll see if it smears too when I put this on here. Now this should dry fairly fast because it's going on um, it's going on over the slip, which is pretty dry. And I'm just using an old paint lid here for to kind of mix my paints in. You know me, I don't really, um, well, I don't always use them straight out of the, out of the bottle. I'm, some of my mix up. Um, let's see, what am I looking for? What are you looking for, Lisa? Try to remember. <laughs> you know how it is when you go and, gosh, I don't know, the older I get, I walk in a room and try to remember what the heck I came in there for. Oh. Try it. There we go. 
go. So I think it's like focus, focus. Sometimes it's hard to focus, focus. So I'm putting a little bit of the bright yellow on here. Just, you know me, I don't like f flat colors. That is one thing nice about the commercial, the regular glazes. Um, you know, some of those have so much depth of color. Um, you know, because they move and, uh, I mean, like the regular glazes, what I mean, like, um, like, here's a really good one. This Potter's Choice, the uh, Ancient Jasper. This glaze is just beautiful, and it goes with everything. Uh, but if it's if you put it on rather thin, it can be like a brick-colored red. It can be green. It can be dark brown where it's thick. And it's beautiful over white um, and so many, so many other colors. Ancient Jasper. That is a beautiful glaze. Um, but yeah, so that one's got a lot of a lot of depth to it, which is um, really nice. So I'm just trying to put some a little bit of white in here. Try to can't believe it's already full. <clears throat> Where did the summer go? I'm just not ready for pumpkins yet. Like I love making pumpkins. I, I love pumpkins. I don't know. I don't know why. I love pumpkin bread. I actually had some pumpkin ice cream one time. But it didn't taste a whole lot like pumpkin. But I don't know. I just don't feel like I'm ready yet for fall. And I see people getting pumpkins out and my husband wants to put Halloween stuff up. I said, are you crazy? <laughs> I said, I better not see any Halloween stuff up. You can't put that up until I said at least October 1st. But he and my son love, love Halloween. It was fun when we had kids come around, but we don't have many kids come around anymore. Okay, so I drew a sunflower on there and you know me I'm going to outline it real quick I just filled this thing so hopefully it's the right consistency because as I was um, now you know what I probably should have done this one first before I put the latex on there I guess that will I guess that one won't be outlined so I use the Amico Velvet Jet Black. So from what I just heard um, somebody talk about this from Amico, and they said the Jet Black actually, I guess because it's much stronger, it will come through other underglazes. It'll show through like regular glazes. So this is probably what they have in their, in their pens. Um, well, like the designer liner. Here's a designer liner. Like those will come through under glazes and regular glazes. They'll they'll pop their way through. Okay. Let's keep moving, Lisa. Keep moving. Let's see if I can get this off now. Jeez a piece. Gosh, that's in there hard. How do I get that in there so hard? I might have to use my teeth to get that out. It probably has some underglaze in there. Oh, this is just like one of those videos where it just doesn't want to go right. Well, I got another one back that I may have to use. I've never had it stick in there like that. Okay, well, go to plan B. So I'm going to stick that in some water. Get a little cup of water here. What you can do, if it sticks, I'm just going to stick it in that so I can use it because I've got other things to do here. 
Let's see if I can get this one to work right. Oh, there we go. This, this thing here is so old. Make sure it... Make sure it's working properly. Usually I'm working on bisqueware, but for this latex, I was hoping I could carve through it. See now, if you're using shellac, um, you can carve through it. I wanted to see too if you could do water resist with it. So I probably. Hmm, I'm going to put some. Well, this is drying. Because my head's getting all stuffed up from breathing that stuff in. Oh, gosh. It smells like ammonia. I wonder if that's so I'm gonna quick do a design a flower pattern in this one I don't know if you're familiar with water resist at least that's what I call it um, what that is a lot of people will use shellac and you paint shellac on greenware um, in the hard hard um, leather stage and then um, so let's see if that works. And then once the shellac is dry, you take a wet sponge and you, you know, just rub over it with your wet sponge and it washes the, it wears the, uh, the clay away and leaves the imprint of whatever design you've painted on with your shellac. So it's kind of hoping that um, this worked the same way. But I think that's that's good for now. So there's my sunflower. I'm gonna let this dry, and then I'm going to paint over where the the leaves are, the petals are, with the latex, and then see if um, and then paint the outside here and see if that works on there. At least that's the plan. Okay, so this one I want to see. Um, let's put this away. I know I probably let, lost half of you guys by now. The Pazler Company will probably never send me anything again. Okay, so let's see. So this is white underglaze. It's just the Amico uh, white. I think this is the LUG. Yeah, this is their lug. Um, it's more opaque. That's what the LUG. So, so the flower has got the latex on it. The well, I should say, the film resist from Pazler. So let's paint over here. And again, this is on leather hard clay. This is Kentucky Brown Bear. And it's doing a really nice job of resisting. So, 
here's what it looks like. You can see where the white underglaze is peeling back over the wax. Re I keep saying wax resist. It's really film. Film resist is what they call it. But it's like a latex resist. So you can see how that's peeling back over it. So now, I don't, I don't want to let it get too dry because you know when you take tape off of paint when you're painting a room or something, if you don't have to take the tape off right away, it pulls off some of the paint. Um, so I'm going to, before it gets too dry, if you can see this, so I just pulled this corner up. And look at that. I know. Oh, I like that. Look, oh, whoa. <laughs> Okay, so all the white underglades that was on the wax resist or the film resist just went on my face and in my hair. So, <laughs> so if I got white spots on me, I come back. So yeah, it look, works great though. Doesn't it look nice? Oh, I love that. So what we did was on the greenware, leather hard. You could paint your underglaze your flowers and then put the wax resist over the top. The film resist. Why do I keep saying that? Film resist. Put the film resist over the top. Then do your underglaze on the outside and you don't have to, my gosh, I mean, look how fast I did that. You don't have to go in each little crevice. Wow, that's really nice. I'll have to take this to their recreation center where I work and let others try this too. They'll love this stuff. Yeah. And so now I can even um, go back with my... I wish I could get that other one working. Let's see. I've got a couple different kinds. Let's see if this one works. That one's probably not enough in there. I use this kind too, but not very often. This is just a little bit cheaper brand. With a, I think this is a 20 tip. So I use that one too, but <clears throat> there's not a whole lot in there. I don't think that'll, I don't know how well that'll work. Well, we can try it. Yeah, hmm. yeah that's almost empty. Let's just see if I can't get this off. That is, that is really in there. I frantically look for something to pull that off of there. How about a scissors? Oh, shoot. Oh, gosh, now the pin is in there. Okay, so that wasn't that wasn't a really, really good idea. Now I have to get a pliers. Okay, Lisa, let's just, let's go to plan B. Plan B. Plan B is always good. Go back to this thing here. I know you're all out there laughing at me. <clears throat> but it's all good. Okay. So yeah, so you can go back this way. And now I can just put my lines on here. And by using that wax, ah, Lisa, Lisa, film resist. Good Lord. By using the film resist, it was so much easier to paint around my flower. I think what I'll do with this, I was going to make a spoon rest, but it, uh, since it got too hard, <clears throat> I think it'll just be one of those little like, trivets people can set their hot plates on or hot coffee on a nice table. So yeah, so now I can just put my liner on there. Now I go back when this is dry, well no, actually I'll bisque this. See, I'm used to working on bisqueware. I'll biscuit, then I'll put the clear on. Normally, I just put the clear on right away if it's on bisqueware. So, so now if I wanted to just put, I thought about doing this. I could now just go back and put the latex on the white, and then put the clear on the flower. That might look kind of pretty. Um, I'll have to do that on the bisque when it's after it's bisque though. 
Um, and then the, the flower would be a flat color. And then this would be, this would be shiny or vice versa, depending if I put the wax resist here. Oh, gosh, somebody shoot me now. No, no, not seriously. The film resist, if you put the film resist here, um, and then clear this, this will be shiny and that'll be flat because you just peel that off and you flat. So that'd be, that'd be a nice contrast. Either have this flat or that flat, depending, and you wouldn't have to do both of them in the clear. You wouldn't do the whole thing in the clear. I know, probably, you probably, I probably lost y'all now. I'm like talking in circles here. So yeah, this one, that's all dry now. You could do that. You could do the same thing with that one. Anyway, let's try to do the water resist. One more test here. Since this is going so well. Okay, so here's the other test I wanted to do. Now, you can see the, where the pink is. It's a little still damp. Like I said, that's because I I have it on greenware. <clears throat> but let's try. Uh, yeah, let's. So, no, that doesn't work. See what happened? So that doesn't work. So it doesn't work for the water resist. So you'll see me later blazing these. <clears throat> so what it's really good for is when you're trying to glaze in a certain spot and you don't want the other spot to get covered. So I could go back and I could probably do cover the white with the film resist and then paint this with clear or just dip it. You'll just be able to dip it with clear. And then this will be um, the shiny and then peel the wax, the film resist off of here. I just don't want to say film resist. Anyway, <clears throat> so let's try to, I hope you got something out of that. <laughs> No, it really is a good product, but the film resist does not work for water resist um, because it comes off so easy, which is what it's supposed to do. Um, so what it really works well for, you cannot carve through it, so you can't use it for sofrito. And if you use um, um, the shellac you can or wax, you can carve through that to do sofrito. Um, you cannot use the wax for water resist, but the shellac you can use for water resist. And like I was saying with the shellac, if you paint that on um, your leather hard, let it dry and take a wet sponge over the top, where you applied the shellac stays in place and the clay wears away around it and you get, you know, um, you know, an impression there which is nice. I, I haven't done a video on that, but, um, I don't, it's not something I really do a lot of, as you can probably tell. But, um, so, but this is, this is good for if you want to coat the bottoms of your pots. And like I said, what's nice about it is that you don't have to refire to get the wax off or the slack off. This just peels off. So if you wanted to wax, <clears throat> if you wanted to coat the bottom of these and then dip them in glaze and then just peel it peels off so it did what it did what it was supposed to do um it does have a strong odor though as you know <laughs> um if you've made it this far in the video <laughs> but anyway it's a it's a great product it does what it's supposed to do um i was just kind of hoping it would i'd be able to carve through it but it's you know and then they've got these pencils too. They're under glazed pencils. And these are really nice. So shout out to Pazler. And thanks for watching. Thanks for bearing with me. Thanks for laughing with me. And uh, there'll be some other videos that I have going on here.
I'm going to glaze some other things and I'll do another video soon. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Thanks so much.